Welcome back. Next, we're going to introduce you to an employee who got his start at the city at a very young age, thanks to a popular city program. City TV's Corinne Torin has the story. Like many recent high school graduates, Marco Felix wanted a summer job that could hopefully become a career. Little did he know that his opportunity would come so soon. I saw flyers posted and I thought I'd give it a shot since I didn't have a job at the time. And I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do with my, with my life and what route to take. So I gave it a try. What Marco tried was the city's apprenticeship program, which gives local youth hands-on experience in different occupations around the city. These apprentices learn to work as part of a team and develop lifelong skills. The Job Apprenticeship Program is a program that's aimed at low-income youth in the community, uh, primarily youth uh, ages uh, 16 to 21. And what the program does, it, uh, it recruits individuals that have minimal skills, uh, minimal experience in, in work or, and no experience in, in being an environment that's required uh, for them to have a lot of discipline, a lot of uh, uh, skills dealing with customer service. One of the unique things about the program is that uh, we do have a lot of flexibility with the participants because the main emphasis is on, on providing a training opportunity for youth that normally wouldn't get that chance out in the community. Marco's co-workers not only taught him the ropes, they also encouraged him to aim high and complete his wastewater operator certifications. I had a few guys that really helped me out throughout my internship. Those two people that really encouraged me to, to stay in the industry and if I, if I enjoy it, to work hard and working hard does eventually lead you to where you want to go and where you want to be. Because he's so focused, he's becoming valuable very quickly. People learn at different rates and Marco seems to be learning the plant um, really rapidly and it's a big complicated facility and, and he seems to be grasping all the different processes and, and, and the interrelations between the processes um, very quickly. There's never a shortage of things to do at El Estero, which treats 10 to 15 million gallons of wastewater daily. You could be in an office at, in one, at one minute and you could be out in the field driving a big truck in the other. It's, it's a very diverse environment. You don't, you can't get bored around this place. At the end of the day, Marco enjoys his career and his co-workers and the fact that he is making a difference in his community. We don't really think about it on a daily basis, but all our waste needs to be treated and handled accordingly to protect the environment, the oceans, which are really important to us here in California. And it's very important for all of us, but we don't realize it until we actually visualize the process and understand that it requires a lot of attention daily. Yep, I'll uh, meet you over there. Just as Marco was helped by his fellow workers, he now uses his experience to assist newer employees. I think across the board everybody likes Marco and likes working with him. Um, he's kind of, he's become, he's a go-to guy. You can ask him, and always ask Marco for help and he'll be there to help out. Marco is living proof that hard work pays off. To learn more about the city's apprenticeship program, please call 897-2582. In November of 2000, Santa Barbara voters approved Measure B to improve creek and ocean water quality. In our next segment, Kayla Weber shows us the testing processes funded by that measure and how important they are to achieving that goal. Santa Barbara's Creeks Division is a driving force behind maintaining the health of some of our most precious natural resources. Their mission is to improve creek and ocean water quality, as well as restore creeks to a more natural state. The Creeks Division staff comes to work every day to try to improve creek and ocean water quality in the city of Santa Barbara, and water quality monitoring is a very important tool for us to determine how successful we are with our, with our projects and our programs. 
For 10 years, the Creeks Division has been monitoring the physical, biological, and chemical composition of the water to identify sources of pollution and eliminate them. We use our water quality monitoring to identify uh, the location that the pollution is coming from so that we can go and eliminate those sources of pollution. It's important to address pollutants before they reach where all urban runoff and creek water ends up, the ocean. It's really important to remember that anything you put down that drain, what, or even you know, in the gutter near that drain, whether that's just soap suds from your car washing, that's going into a pipe that's going straight to the creek. The aquatic organisms, the fish and the invertebrates and the insects have to swim and breathe and live in whatever you're putting into that storm drain. And then that water is going to get to the ocean where Santa Barbara residents and visitors are going to swim. So we don't want to put anything in there that we wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to put in your aquarium or in your own swimming pool. Each week, local creek water samples are taken here to the Water Resources Laboratory, where they will be tested for bacteria such as coliform and E. coli. Water samples are mixed with a reagent, which encourages any present indicator bacteria to grow. 24 hours later, if indicator bacteria are present, it will show up under UV light. Lab analysts record the data and send it to the Creeks Division, where they determine if action needs to be taken. When we find a place where we've got some pollution source, but we can't, uh, we can't pinpoint the, the exact source of the location, we will construct a, a capital project to capture and treat that polluted water before it gets into the creeks and ocean. The Creeks Division administers a wide variety of water quality improvement projects to address areas of concern. Sometimes simply installing debris screens on storm drains will get the job done. Other times, complete creek restoration is the best option. The Mesa Creek Daylighting Project is part of the Arroyo Burro Estuary Restoration Project. So the Mesa Creek Daylighting took um, a section of what had been a creek many years in the past. It had been then um, buried, that creek had been buried and a storm drain had put in to convey the water and that led to Arroyo Burro Estuary. The daylighting project took that storm drain back out and tried to restore the creek to its previous natural state as much as possible. Though many factors contribute to water pollution, one issue is always at the top of the list. One of the major sources of water pollution in the city, like most urban areas, is non-point source pollution or just urban runoff. And one of the places we have polluted water running off all the time is parking lots, and streets and the Creeks Division has initiated several projects where we are going into some city parking lots and uh, putting permeable pavers in to allow that polluted water to uh, pass through the, the parking lot surface into the soil where those pollutants will be treated naturally in the soil. The impact of urban runoff is especially critical during the first major storm of the season. The highest pollutant concentrations are generally found during the first flush. This includes the first um, part of any storm, but even more so the first storm of the year and the first part of that first storm of the year. This is when the rain can wash off all of the pollutants that have accumulated on our surfaces. This includes um, oil and grease that have been deposited on roadways. This includes some pesticides that might be sprayed in gardens. And generally, the first rainstorm is not huge. So we get all of this material washed off, all of the pollutants washed off by a moderate amount of water. And so then you can see the concentrations of pollutants in the creek that are at their highest. The Creeks Division has a number of projects they will be focusing on this year, including the Mission Lagoon Restoration Project. This involves more than just water quality. For this one, we're also collecting uh, information about what organisms are present in the lagoon and we're hoping to see a restoration to um, aquatic organisms that are more indicative of improved water quality and Im improved habitat. Through testing processes and improvement projects, Santa Barbara's Creeks Division has succeeded in improving the water quality of our creeks and ocean. Their efforts will continue to be essential to our local water's health going forward. To report water pollution in our creeks, call the city's Enforcement Water Pollution Hotline at 897-2688. Or if you want more information about Creeks programs, visit SB Creek.